And and what are these guys right here? Circles. They're both circles. They're pretty easy circles. Um, how could how would you describe this one? Centered at the origin and a radius of two, right? So we just go two units in each direction. And we usually label the center. So we'd say the center is zero, zero. There's some notes right there. That's the back side, thanks. Um, what's the difference between this circle right here in part A and this circle right here in part B? Yeah, the center shifts. Now, if I put a minus 2 with an x, you'd kind of think it would go left, but it actually goes to the right. And we talked about why that is. It, it makes it make the shape two units later in the x direction, so that's why it moves to the right too. And what about if we put a plus 1 with the y in parentheses before we square? It does. It makes it go down. Okay. So it makes it make the graph in the vertical direction one unit sooner than it normally would. So this actually moves it to the right two and down one, to the right two and down one. And the thing you want to be careful with in identifying where the center is, is sometimes they'll write the y part of the equation first and the x part of the equation second. Not very often, but you want to be careful. It's always the opposite of the number with the x, that's the x coordinate for the center, and the opposite of the number with the y, that's the y coordinate for the center. So the center on this one is going to be 2 comma negative 1. And the radius is still 2, so we're going to go 2 units in each one of the directions. Okay, Try and make a good looking gra graph, but if we label it 2 comma negative 1, and then we say the radius is 2, then we're all set. Um, distance formula. Big square root, right? x2 minus x1, quantity squared y2 minus y1 quantity squared. Okay, That's the distance formula. Please don't forget that if you don't have that in your head right now. That can come in handy in a lot of different settings. It's, it's relied on quite often in college algebra and trigonometry and calculus, so make sure you've got that one down. Okay, And we already talked about the definition of a circle. This circle actually comes from this definition right here. We can set the radius equal to r. Okay or the distance equal to r, and then if I said the center was, let's say the center is h comma k, so this is the x1 uh, and this is the y1, and then any point on the circle is xy, then it would look like this. It would be x minus the x coordinate of the center, that's an h, then it would be plus y minus the y coordinate of the center, that would be k, and then we square that. That doesn't look like the equation of a circle until you do what? Square both sides. Then you'd have r squared over here. Then you'd have x minus h quantity squared, y minus k quantity squared. And that's that familiar formula that we're used to seeing. Are there any questions there? OK, I, I forgot one thing. We'll be right back. <clears throat> So we're going to talk about conic sections today. So everybody here has watched cartoons, right? Yeah. Okay, if you were watching a cartoon and a cartoon character went into a dark room and they flipped on a flashlight, so pretend this is the TV, I'm the character, here's the flashlight. If I turn on the flashlight, how do they make the light look? What shape is it? Circle. Triangle. Like okay, it's, it, from the side it looks like a triangle. So remember those cross-sectional slices that they were having you do on the SAGE test? If you think of the light that comes out of here, if I turn towards you, what shape does it look like in cross-section? Then it looks like a circle, because it's coming out and going like this. But if I turn to the side, the light coming out is shaped like this, so it kind of looks like a triangle. So if we were to think about that in three dimensions, what looks like a triangle from the side and looks like a circle like this, what shape would it be? A cone. Okay. So what we've got here, if I turn on this flashlight, I've got a cone of light that comes out of it. Okay. Got a cone of light pointing one direction. 
Okay, and when we say conic sections, um, we're going to study four of them. We have already know about one of them. We didn't really call it a conic section, but there's a circle, there's a parabola, there's an ellipse, and something called a hyperbola. Okay, and they're all slices that you can get if you slice a plane across a cone, a double cone in this particular case, but we're going to use this example right here. So if I turn this flashlight on and I point it straight toward the board, Okay, so the board is a plane slicing across that plane of light. It's kind of like I'm pointing it at you, and what cross-section do we see? What shape do we see? We see a circle. Okay, So if I tilt it like this, what shape do we see now? We see an ellipse. An ellipse is a fancy word for an oval. Okay, If I turn it a little bit more, okay, what shape is that? Okay, That is a parabola. You can see it kind of bending around and curving around the whole way, and it's got this nice little shape right there. What's happening there is this side of the cone of light is hitting the board, and this side of the cone of light is not, okay? But the center of the light is heading kind of into the board, but this part doesn't come around and hit it. Everybody good there? Okay, so we've got circle here, very basic shape. Ellipse, kind of a cool shape. You can see it, that it's a little bit uh, oblong and that sort of thing, okay? I move a little bit more, then I get a parabola. And if I do this, if I point it straight toward, you, some of you can see the light on the wall over there. Okay. Okay. Now that's that's kind of like a parabola, isn't it? Okay. It's got this nice curve to it right here. Okay. But what happens out here and here that was different on a parabola? They go straighter. In fact, the further out I go, the more these lines right here, with their, these sides, would look like straight lines. It would look more like that triangle that we were talking about earlier. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why they call them conic sections, and we've got a bunch of examples right here. Let me blow this up just a little bit. Okay, we've got the four examples that we're going to spend most of our time talking about. Okay, so this is when that plane plane intersects the cone um, parallel to this, or sorry, perpendicular to this axis that goes through both of these cones, kind of slices straight across. This shape right here is the circle that we're talking about, okay? If we tilt it just a little bit, then we get that shape right there. We get an oval, okay? If we tilt it enough that it intersects this side, but not this side over here, then we get a parabola, okay? And if I, if I take a plane and slice it across um, and it's parallel to, with, to this axis that goes down the center right here, I get a hyperbola here and I get a hyperbola here. It comes in two different branches, okay? So those are the four conic sections. Circle we already know about. We're going to talk about uh, parabolas today because they're relatively simple. The ellipse and the hyperbola are a little bit more complicated. So if we had to say in order of difficulty, pretty darn easy here. This one's not bad, but the format for a parabola is going to be very different than what we've talked about before. Okay, This would be the third most difficult, and the hyperbolas are the toughest. Okay, No question about them. There are lots of different things to keep track of on a hyperbola. Now, having introduced all that, how many of you have seen conic sections before, like all four of them? You've seen them all four? Okay, very good. Okay, so he's aware of them and stuff like that. Okay, now... There are some what are called degenerate conic sections, okay? So think of the connotation of a degenerate, okay? Not very useful most of the time, okay? You could have a plane intersect the cone right at the two points, and then you'd have a point. Not very interesting. You could have this plane that just goes right along this side and right along that side, intersects it in one single line, or if we line it up just right, then we end up with um, two intersecting lines. Okay? We don't study these. They're not very interesting. We don't use them very often. Um, I suppose there's a use for them somewhere. I've never seen it, and I've taken one heck of a lot of math classes. Okay, So we're going to spend our time talking about um, the parabola, the ellipse, and the hyperbola. Okay, Any questions? Okay, um, One of the most useful things that you can know is how to identify them. Okay, just by looking at the equations, the graphs are pretty darn easy. I've got examples of the graphs right here. But if you can look at the equation of a conic section, and they've got a particular format um, and some characteristics that we can look for, you can tell the difference just by looking, and then you know exactly what you need to do. Okay, So we'll study these enough, hopefully, that you know, okay, once I figure out it's an ellipse, 
here's what I've got to do. If I figure out it's a hyperbola, here's what I've got to do. So let's take a look at this. Um, these are all per, uh, equations that produce parabolas. Now, you'll notice that this parabola looks very familiar. This one, not so much. This one's tilted on its side. Anybody notice a problem with this? It's not a function. In fact, neither is a circle, neither are any ellipses, and neither are any hyperbolas. Only parabolas that open up or down can be functions. All of the other conic sections have to be what we call relations. They're just sets of ordered pairs. Okay? That doesn't mean they're not useful because they're not functions. In fact, they are extremely useful. The reason we study functions is because they're relatively easy to start out with. And then once we get advanced enough, we start talking about things that are relations where we can deal with the fact that, hey, if I plug in a 4 for the x, I'm okay with there being two or three answers for y. I understand what that means. Think about when we dealt with uh, parametrics. Parametrics do the same thing. Okay? We could have a, you know, an x going back and forth like this while the y is changing and stuff like that. So you can model some pretty cool behavior if you don't just restrict yourself something that passes the vertical line test on the coordinate plane. Okay, everybody good there? Okay, I want you to take a look at all of these equations right here. All of these produce parabolas. What do you notice they all have in common? Squared variable. Okay, look at all these. These all make circles. What do all these have in common? Okay, now if we say squared variables, you're right on the right track. All of these have quadratics in them. Okay. Think about how many variables are squared in each one of these. With a parabola, how many squared variables are there? There's only one. Okay. So that's the easiest one to identify. So that's why we start with that one. It's a fairly familiar shape, and it's easy to pick out which it is. So a parabola only has one squared variable. So if you're going through and looking at some type of quadratic equation and only one of the variables is squared, you know for a fact you've got a parabola, okay? Let's take a look at the examples for circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. You'll notice that on each one of those, they have two squared variables, both the x is squared and the y is squared. So in order to tell the difference between them, we've got to pick something other than their squared variables because they both have two squared variables. Does anybody see anything that's different about these? What do all of these have in common that makes them circles? What do all these have in common that would make them ellipses? And what do all these have in common that would make them hyperbolas? Sven? Okay, so you add what? You add the squared variables. Okay. So add them on circles and ellipses and subtract them on hyperbolas. That okay? Okay, that has a minus in front of it, and that has a minus in front of it. So if we think of negatives as subtraction, does Sven's guess hold? Not quite. We need to modify it. He's onto something. Okay. Can anybody improve what he's talking about? We're on the right track. Let's take this one, this one, and this one. Just look at those for just a second. That is a circle, that is an ellipse, and that is a hyperbola. They each have two squared variables. What do you notice is different about each one of those? And then if you notice something's different, see if you can confirm it with one of the other sets of equations. Noah, did you notice something? What did you notice? Okay, this one has a coefficient in front of the y. Okay, um, let's see. Take a look at this next one. This one has a coefficient in front of the x. This one has a coefficient in front of the x and the y that's different than 1. Any ideas? What do you know? Yeah, Peyton. Okay, other than this has a negative 2 in front of it, and so does that. So that has one. Yeah. Okay, same coefficient. 
Okay. What about these guys? Okay, different coefficients. And what about these guys? What do you notice is different about these is in comparison to these guys right here? Okay, different signs. Okay, that's that's pretty much it. Okay, so if you'll flip over the page, we'll kind of narrow this in just a little bit and we'll make sure we're clear. Okay, this is how you can look at an equation and tell whether or not it's a parabola, a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. Okay, if the equation has just one squared variable, that's the easiest one, it's got to be a parabola. Oh, I forgot to, to mention one thing. It's got to be in general form if we're going to be able to use these rules. And when we say general form, what we mean is all the variables on one side, usually we set it equal to zero. We usually move everything over to one side, and then we call that general form. If you just move the variables over, that would be fine. Okay? So if it's got one squared variable, then it's got to be a parabola. If the equation has two squared variables, then we have to check something that's a little bit more complicated. If they have the same sign and the same coefficient, then what is it? Then it's a circle. Okay. If they have the same sign and the same coefficient. So if we look at this example back up here, okay, notice that both of those have coefficients of negative 2. These both have coefficients of positive 1. These both have co coefficients of positive 1. Okay? So that would make a circle. Okay? If they have the same sign, so if they're both either positive or both negative, so notice that, notice that these are both positive, these are both positive, those are both positive, okay? those are both negative. If they have the same sign but different coefficients, then what is it? Then it's an ellipse. Okay, And the cool part about this is we kind of end with something very easy. Hey, does it have a squared variable? If it does, then it's a parabola. And we end with something that's really easy. If it's got two squared variables and they just have different signs, then by default, what's the last choice? Hyperbola. Okay. All they have to be is just different signs. They can even be the same number. You can have a 4 as a coefficient on the x squared and a negative 4 as a coefficient on the y squared. You've got a hyperbola. No doubt about it. Okay? Yeah. Sure. Get everybody else one while you're out there. Okay, any questions there? Okay, so let's just put a P, an E, a C, or an H by each one of these when we figure out what they are. So, what is this? Got to be a circle, okay? Same sign and same coefficient. Okay, let's look at B. Good look. Two squared variables. Parabola is out. Negative here, positive here. So it's got to be hyperbola. This next one? Parabola. And part D? Got to be an ellipse. Squared variable, so that one's got to be a parabola. And how about this ugly mess right here? What is it? Look really closely. Okay, what's the coefficient on the y squared? One fourth. What's the coefficient on the x squared? Negative one sixteenth. One's positive, one's negative because they have different signs. Got to be a hyperbola. Okay? All right, any questions? Okay. Um, we're going to do something that's kind of theoretical. Um, get used to this. You will see this a little bit in 1050 and 1060, and then you see this type of demonstration quite often um, in calculus. What we do is we go from the definition and we prove something. Okay? We go step by step by step, and this isn't beyond anybody here. Anybody here could do it. It might seem a little bit overwhelming to start off with, but anybody here could figure it out. Okay, here's the definition of a parabola. 10.2 is all about parabolas. That's all we study in 10.2. We just introduce the idea of all the conic sections, and then we really study parabolas. So a parabola is the set of points on a plane that are equidistant from a given point and a given line. So we've got this given point, and we've got this given line. Okay, the given point is called the 
focus, and the given line is called the directrix. Okay, now, um, I don't want you to write anything down for the time being. Okay, if you want to draw a picture of this in just a second, here's what we're talking about. Okay, so I just want you to watch and I want you to think. Okay, um, the circle is the set of points that are equidistant from a given point. So if I take this as the given point and I go out this far, that means all of the points on the circle go around like this. Okay, these would be all the xy pairs that would satisfy whatever that particular equation is. Okay because they all meet that definition. They're all the exact same distance from that given point, from the center, okay? So here's the focus right here, and here's the directrix. Now, for convenience sake, and in this particular notation, I'm going to say that the, I put the center right here, or sorry, this is going to be the vertex, okay? I put that point right there. That point right there satisfies, in fact, I'm going to change colors so we can keep track of this, that point right there is a point that satisfies the definition. It's the same distance from the point, the focus, as it is to the line, the directrix. Does everybody agree that that point right there satisfies the definition? It is the same distance from the focus as it is to the directrix. Okay, that's the easy one. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Okay, now, I'm going to go over here this far. Okay, I'm going to go to right there. If I chose this little blue point that I'd made right there, that little mark that I made, is it closer to the line? Is it closer to the point over here, the focus? Or is it about the same distance? Is it closer to the line or closer to the point or about the same distance? It's closer to the line, isn't it? Okay, Because it stayed the same distance from the, the line, but it got further away from the point, right? So in order to make that point satisfy the, the definition, I'm going to need to move it. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. Now, if I put that point about right there, does that look like it's about the same distance from the line as it is from the point? Everybody okay with that? Hop doesn't think so? Like which line are you talking about? I'm talking about the red line. This is the directrix, this is the given line, and this is the given point. This is the directrix, and this is the focus. You okay with that? Okay. Now, if I come out here, okay, now clearly I can't put this point right here. It's much closer to the directrix than it is to the focus, isn't it? So if I'm going to make that a point on the parabola, I need to move it up. And I would say about maybe right here. Does that look about right? ballpark we could get out a piece of uh, uh, we could get out a, a ruler and we could measure it and everything and we could mark it off until it's perfect but that looks pretty close doesn't it and what if I come out here I would say I'd have to move maybe about right there so that this distance right here was about the same as that distance right there is that okay with everyone okay now if I just take those three points that I did over here, this one, this one, and this one, if I went and did the same thing on the other side, wouldn't the exact same thing happen? Wouldn't I have a point that's about right there, and a point that's about right there, and a point that's about right there? And then if I connect those and kind of say where all of the other points would be, wouldn't it look about like that? Now, there are paper folding examples. We could get out rulers and all sorts of stuff, but that's how the shape of a parabola is formed. It actually comes from a definition. Okay? All right. Any questions? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to derive the formula for a parabola that opens up, and it's going to look slightly different than what it did before because we're going to use the definition. Okay? I'm going to take this point right here. And I'm going to call that point right there x comma y. That's a point on the parabola. It should satisfy the equation. Remember, okay, we mentioned this toward the beginning of the course. Don't forget that if a point is on the graph, then it satisfies the equation that makes the graph. If you find a point that um, makes the equation true, it's got to be on the graph. Okay, so those things work in both directions. Okay, now, what I want to keep track of is this. 
I want to figure out how far it is from here to here and how far it is from here to here. So I'm going to call this one D1 and I'm going to call this one D2. So distance 1 and distance 2. Now distance 1 is the distance between these two points. There are the coordinates for that point. There are the coordinates for this point. So if I write down D1, D1 should equal a big square root of, remember the distance formula, I'm going to say that's the second x minus, what's the first x? I'm going to find the difference between this x-coordinate and that x-coordinate. So it's x minus 0, right? x minus 0 quantity squared. And then I'm going to find the difference between the y-coordinates. So this is going to be y minus a quantity squared. Any questions there? I got this point on the curve, we called it x, y. I've got this given point, we called it the focus. Its coordinates were 0, comma, a. And I got that from the distance formula. Any questions? Okay, now, this is going to take just a little bit of thinking, but this is actually an easier problem. This is actually easier to figure out. Let's figure out what d2 is. If this point right here, if that point right there is x, comma, y, and I want to know how far it is from this line right here, whose equation is y equals a, or sorry, y equals negative a. How do I find out how far it is from here to here? Don't answer out loud. I want you to just think for a second. How do I figure out how far it is from here to here? If you've got it figured out, great. If not, can you tell me what the coordinates of that point is right there? Don't say anything out loud. Think about it for just a second. What would the coordinates of this point be right here if it's straight below this point x comma y? If you've written it down, great. If not, one more hint. What would the x coordinate of this point right here be if it's straight below that one right there. Okay, what is the x-coordinate? x-coordinate's got to be x. Okay? What's the y-coordinate? Negative y. Because the equation says every point on that line has to have a y-coordinate of negative y. So I'm going to put a ne sorry, negative a. Okay? So how would I find the distance between these two points? Big square root. This is going to be x minus what? x minus x. Quantity squared. Then it's going to be y minus y minus what? Minus a. Quantity squared. Okay? So that's going to be a plus a, correct? And then the definition of a parabola says it's the set of points that are equidistant from a point, that's D1, and this other line, that distance would be D2. So what do I do with the two things right here to make the equation? Set them equal to each other. So here's, here's what I've got. I'm going to take this and I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to do D1 equals D2. So here's what I've got. I've got X squared plus y minus a squared. That's all underneath the square root. And I set that equal to, well, what's this right here? Zero. So do I even need to write it? I don't even need to write it, right? And this would just be y plus a quantity squared. Any questions there? Okay. If I'm going to simplify this, do I need the square roots anymore? I don't need the square roots anymore. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to write down x squared plus y minus a squared equals y plus a squared. Any questions? Okay. Would you square each one of these binomials, please? And please be careful. OK, 
Okay. Um, you're going to have the opportunity to make this mistake about a hundred times in 1050 and in 1060 and dozens and dozens and dozens of times in, in calculus. So when I square this binomial, I get y squared, right? And I get a squared, right? Is there a middle term? What is it? Minus 2ay, right? Or ya if you wanted to write it that way, okay? On this other one right here, I get y squared. I get plus 2ay, and then I get plus a squared, correct? Okay, now, what's kind of cool about this equation right here? It looks like a mess, but what's kind of nice about it? Okay, y squared goes away. What else goes away? The a squareds go away, and so that leaves me with that leaves me with an x squared minus a two a y two a y equals a two a y. And then just to clean things up just a little bit, we're going to move the minus two a y to the other side, and I get x squared equals four a y. And this right here is the equation of a parabola that opens up whose vertex is at the origin and the focus is A units up inside there. So you go straight up to get the focus. That's A units to get to the focus there and you go A units down to get to the directrix. So this distance right here is A and that distance right there is A. Okay, And that distance is important because it's, it's fundamental to figuring out the basic shape of these conic sections, these parabolas here. Okay, Any questions there? Okay, so in this box right here, if I've got the point 0 comma a as a focus and a directrix y equals negative a, then we get x squared equals 4ay. That's what we got from the definition. Distance formula, definition of a parabola, and all that sort of stuff. This parabola opens up. The vertex is at the origin because the origin is smack dab in the middle of those two points right there. Okay. And it says blank is the distance from the vertex to the focus and to the directrix. A. A is that distance. Okay? Okay, and this is an important thing. Oops, looks like I missed a set of parentheses there. The focus will always be inside the curved part of the conic section. So you'll notice how this curves around right here. It's going to be inside that curve. Okay, all conic sections wrap around the focus or the foci or focuses, if you want to call it that. Okay, and that's true of all of them. Any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And guess how many guess how many foci a circle has? Just one. And guess where it is? Right at the center. All right. Any questions there? Okay. Guess what would happen if we did this? So if I tilted this 90 degrees, this line isn't y equals negative a anymore. It would be x equals negative a. And this point, with this point right here is still the origin. This point, the focus, its coordinates would now be a comma zero. X's and y's switch, right? We tilt it to its side there. Anybody want to take it? What take a guess at what happens to the equation? It used to be x squared equals four a y. Guess what it is now? Y squared. Y squared equals four a x. Okay. So it would be a parabola that opens to its side, like that. And again, this distance right here is a, and this distance right here is a. And that A is very critical. That focal length, that distance from the vertex to the focus, is very important to the overall shape and the features of a parabola. Okay? All right. Um, we're going to do a couple problems. We're going to do a couple quick graphs. Let's talk just for a second about um, why we'd want to know about a parabola. Um, has anybody ever seen a parabola in use? Everybody here has. In fact, you probably have one on your house. Who has satellite TV? Who drives by a satellite dish on their way to school? Okay. 
Those satellite dishes are shaped in the shape of, it's called a paraboloid of revolution. If you were to take one of those disks and cut it right down the center and look at the curve that it makes, that curve is a parabola. So what they do is they take this parabolic shape right here and they kind of spin it around and carve out a dish. And the unique thing about a, a parabolic mirror, okay, and if you ever watch sports and stuff like that, you ever seen the guys on the side holding that uh, plexiglass curved thing with a microphone in it? Mm -hmm. Guess what shape that curved thing is? It's a paraboloid of revolution, okay? And guess where the microphone is? It's inside, it's inside the curved part. It's really at the, it's at the focus. It's at the focus, okay? Because here's what happens, okay? Parabolas have this really cool feature that any, any um, light waves or sound waves or anything like that that come in parallel to this axis right here, they hit this and they bend, and I, this one's not to scale or anything like that, but all of these bounce up and they all go right back to the focus. Okay, now I realize my angle of uh, incidence and reflection and all that sort of stuff don't look right on that one, okay? But that, that uh, focus is at a great place for collecting all of that energy and either transmitting it or something like that or detecting what it is, okay? They use those in, um, in telescopes also sometimes, okay? So some really cool stuff that you can do with parabolas. So that focal length, that distance that A is, it's not like somebody made that up, okay? It actually comes in really handy when we're doing stuff like this. Oh, does yours look like this? Rats. I thought I had that worked out. Hmm. I'll have to fix that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a quick graph right here. Okay, so graph the following and label the important parts. So first of all, you want to look at this and you want to think to yourself, oh, that's a parabola. I know it's a parabola because it's got one squared variable. Then you want to look at it and you want to figure out which direction it opens, okay? Um, you'll notice that both of these are positive, so it's going to be a parabola that opens. If x is squared, it's going to open either up or down, so it, this one's going to open up, okay? It has a vertex at 0, 0 at the origin, okay? And this thing right here has to be 4a. So if 4a is the same as 8, what does that mean a is? That means A is 2. So what that means is we know we're expecting a parabola that opens up. I'm going to go two units up right there. That's where the focus is. I'm going to go two units down right there. That's where the directrix is. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and label this as Y equals negative 2. And I'm going to label the focus as, oops, focus as 0 comma 2. Okay. And then we're going to introduce uh, an interesting word, okay? Um, this is called the lattice rectum, okay? Now, this is always fun to say. I mean, everybody enjoys saying the word rectum. Uh, these are actually Latin words, if you'd like to go up and look at, look at what they mean and all that sort of stuff, but it's called the lattice rectum, okay? And a lattice rectum, its length is 4a. Okay, now, let me explain what the lattice rectum is. Okay. I think the word lattice means side. I'm not sure about rectum. Again, go look it up and amaze your friends and your parents and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so here's what happens is, okay, if we go up to the focus right here, I can go side to side and I can find points on the parabola. So if this right here is 8, that number right there is the entire length of the lattice rectum. So if I go from side to side, I get to go 8 units all together. So if the lattice rectum altogether is eight units long, how far do I go on each side? I go four. So I'm going to go over four, and I'm going to put a point right there, and I'm going to go over four and put a point right there. And those points are on the parabola. So the lattice rectum helps us get the right shape. If it's a really short lattice rectum, it's going to be a pretty narrow graph. It's a, if it's a really long lattice rectum, it's going to be a really wide graph. So the parabola looks like this. Put arrows on the ends, label these points, 4, 2, negative 4, 2, 0, 0, and there's all the information you'd need. Okay? Definitely a parabola. Vertex at the origin. 
which way does it open? Okay, opens right. Okay, so this right here is 4a. That's the length of the lattice rectum. But if 4a is the same as 4, then that means a is equal to 1. a is equal to 1. So I'm going to blow this up just a little bit. So if a is equal to 1, that means I go one unit inside to get to the focus. I go, go one unit in the exact opposite direction to get to the, to the directrix. And let's label those. So the directrix is x equals negative 1. The focus is the point 1 comma 0. Okay, and listen very carefully. How long is the lattice rectum? Four. That number right there is the length of the lattice rectum. So the lattice rectum is four units long. How far do I go in each direction? I only go two in each direction. So I'm going to go up two right here, down two right here. I'm going to draw a nice looking curve. I'm going to extend the ends, put the arrows on the ends. And then I'm going to label these three points that are actually on the parabola. So this is going to be 1, comma, negative 2. This is going to be 1, comma, 2. And this is going to be 0, comma, 0. And anybody looking at that would know you know how to graph that. Okay? Any questions? Sure? Okay. So take a look at those questions on the bottom. What? Oh, maybe I did do this right. Yeah, I did. Okay, because I didn't want you to actually graph this. Okay, what would change about this parabola given this equation right here? Right two, down one. Okay, now remember at the beginning of class I said, please make sure you find the number with the x. That's the x coordinate of the vertex or the center of the circle or whatever, and find the number with the y. Okay, don't just blindly go through and grab this. Don't look at this one and say, hey, I got this one figured out. The vertex is at 1, comma, negative 3. Is that right? It's not right. Okay? The vertex on this one would be find the x variable opposite of the number with it. So this is going to be negative 3 here, and this is going to be positive 1 there. Any questions on that? Other than that, isn't it the same shape as the one up above? It would be, because you'll notice right here, lattice rectum is four units long. They're both positive. It opens to the right. Lattice rectum is eight units long. X is positive, or the, they're, they're both positive, so it opens up because the X is squared. Everybody good there? Okay. Last thing, let's just take a quick look at this, and then I, all I want you to do tonight, I, you've been testing and stuff like that. Would you like the night off? Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Um, most textbooks, and I haven't looked closely at this book, but most textbooks um, give you several different forms of parabolas. I think it's much easier just to learn two. Okay? So if x is squared, it either opens up or down. Okay? The vertex is always, look at the number with the x, that's h. Look at the number with the y, that's k. And then all you need to do is figure out, well, if x is squared, it either opens up or down. It opens up if it's 4a, if it's positive, and it opens down if it's negative 4a. Again, notice which one's squared. Find the number with the x. That's an h. Find the number with the y. That's a k. So the vertex is still at h comma k. It would open which way if it's a positive 4a? It would open to the right. If it's a positive 4a, it would open to the left if it's a negative 4a. Okay, today is Tuesday, right? Okay, you have one more lax day. We're going to work our butts off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you're going to have a great weekend, okay? So I need you to continue to engage your brains. Let's learn some math that's really going to help you over the next year or so, and then we'll call it good, okay? Thanks.